Jesus asks James and John and all of us, can you drink the cup that I will drink? Can you be baptized with my baptism? The cup and the baptism, of course, is the, the sacrifice of suffering, of obedience, to become the servant of all for the salvation of others. The Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life, to give his life as a ransom for many. This is, I, I, I love this, that God, when he calls us to some sort of service, he doesn't beg and say, will you please do this favor for me? Because God doesn't need us. Instead, generously, Jesus offers us, when he calls us to service, Jesus offers us great undeserved power. And we're fools if we pass it up. So God, when he, when he comes to us and he calls us to something, he doesn't whine or beg. He sort of says, if you're looking for a medal, if you're looking for somebody to flatter you into this, then good luck. Because I have souls to save, so grab a shovel or get out of the way. And when we say yes to God, then it isn't, yes, Lord, I will take this burden and do you this favor because I am generous. Instead, we say yes as a grateful response to God's generosity, not only in offering us salvation, but also in allowing us to participate in the salvation of the world. Now our parish, St. Luke, exists to save souls. And so this is incredible that God allows us the privilege of drinking the cup of obedience and sacrifice, the cup of Jesus, for the salvation of the world. When, when, when this happens, very often we don't see it because because this is the point. To drink this cup is to become a hidden servant. And we have plenty of these around here. Not as many as we want, but, but we have many. The liturgical ministers every weekend and every day of the week, servers and sacristans and lectors and ushers and extraordinary ministers, people who behind the scenes work in the food pantry or the Knights of Columbus, those who signed up and went to pray at the abortion clinic, those who lead Bible studies and and help others to know the Lord, the missionaries that we have, the staff, the many catechists, those who coordinate different ministries, members of the finance and pastoral councils, all of these have signed up for some sort of hidden service. And it's, it's a little bit like the guy who's in charge of light bulbs. When the, when the lights are on, nobody says, thank you, great job. But if a light bulb is out, then he's in trouble, you know? All these ways of being a servant, like nobody says, wow, great, you were really up front and no it's just when you don't show up or when you mess up that somebody notices your service but but all of this like our parish has is bearing disproportionate fruit this is something that always surprises me and it is not because we are all so good at what we're doing many of these people are good at what they're doing for sure but that's not the reason why it's disproportionately fruitful but it's because of the way that they go about it these people who are faithful to this kind of servanthood, they don't do it because they get something. They don't do it even because they like to. They make these hidden sacrifices of time and convenience and freedom to imitate Jesus, to become servants and even slaves of all for the salvation of others. And this is the reason for fruitfulness then. Not so much because how excellent they do their work, but because of the cost that they pay, the hidden cost known only to God. This disproportion that I'm talking about, it has led many times, I can't tell you how often I've had this bizarre conversation after mass, greeting people, shaking hands and everything, and uh, somebody will come up and say, well, Father Rob, we're, out of ta- we're from out of town, we just wanted to come visit because we know somebody who goes here, we know somebody who has been here, and it transformed them. Like they met the Lord here, they made these incredible friendships here, it's really made this huge difference. So we heard things about St. Luke, we came to see it for ourselves, and it was wonderful, but we were really surprised because we saw the sacristan begging somebody to help be usher today. And we sort of expect you guys would all have your act together. I'm like, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. The, the, we, we do have these generous servants. The problem is, though, that they're still a minority, you know? And as long as, as those who, who will, will be a servant in this way are a minority, we're in this danger of what is normal, being 
a spectator or a consumer or an, an attendee rather than what's normal is to be a servant, a hidden servant for the salvation of the world. This brings us to our, uh, our patron saint to conclude. Um, St. Luke's Day was Friday and it was beautiful. We had 24 hours of prayer and intercession and thanksgiving to God and we had mass and procession uh, with the Eucharist. So if you missed it, you missed out because it was, it was awesome. We love St. Luke and we have a relic of St. Luke, a piece of bone that you can come up and venerate and pray with um, after mass as you like. But the symbol of St. Luke is an ox. Okay, there are these four symbols of the gospel writers and I used to think that St. Luke kind of got kind of got the last option. Like there's a man, great. There's a, a lion, awesome. There's an eagle, wow. And then there's an ox, and that goes to St. Luke. How, how come he got, he got, he got the, the short end of the stick here? But I've come to really appreciate the symbol of St. Luke as our own symbol, okay, the ox. Because the ox is two things. One, it is a strong animal for labor in the fields, okay? The ox is is like humbly rippling with hidden strength. It isn't flashy like a horse. You know, nobody, no high school girl has like an ox calendar in their room. But the ox is strong and does good work. It tills hard soil to receive the seed and it's obedient to the direction of the farmer that guides the plow. And number two, the ox is an animal of sacrifice. And not every animal is allowed to be sacrificed in the Bible. But the ox is one of them, where its blood is poured out, its body is burned as a sacred offering in love to God. The ox that is strong for labor and is a holy sacrifice, this is like all we want to be. I don't know, maybe we can get get t-shirts, but like to be an ox for the Lord, incredible. This is all I want to be. And the Lord does offer us this. He offers us this hidden power as we become servants of all and even slaves of all. As Jesus redeems the world through his suffering, born of love and obedience, this is is what we step into and say yes to for the salvation of others, for the salvation of the world. This is all we want to be, hardworking servants and our whole lives to be a sacrifice of love to God.